Welcome, everyone, to The Art of Healing with your host, Dr. Judy Jasek of Animal Healing Arts and Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and alternative treatments for cancer, unexplained illnesses, and supporting your pet's natural ability to heal. Welcome, Dr. Judy, to this week's show. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here. In inside and warm. Oh, I know. <laughs> like, how does it go from 94 degrees on Sunday to drop? What was it? 60 degrees over, yeah. like, like overnight, four hour period. Much, yeah, yeah. And we woke That's up crazy. And yesterday afternoon, we had four inches of snow on our back patios. Yeah, and it's supposed to be 87 again next week. Oh, I yeah. saw. I, Welcome to Colorado. This is, yeah, I'm actually wearing a sweater right now, and that's not supposed to happen. I know. I didn't know, like, well, how do I dress? I'm used to dressing for 90 degrees, <laughs> you know? Oh, gosh, let's see. I got to drag out the sweaters, and <laughs> I know. where's my, my coat? coat? <laughs> yeah, my, I was so excited to have my coat rack empty, and I think it was like a month ago we finally got all the coats put away because of summer, and now right? they're just it's all full again. And it's just one of those things that, you know, it's Colorado. It's the joy of living in Colorado. In this right. Day. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Today, we're going to talk about kidney disease and raw feeding. So why is kidney disease so prevalent now? And why is this came up as a topic for us for today's show? I think, I think one of the reasons this topic comes up for me a lot in my practice is there's a lot of misunderstandings about raw feeding and the protein content. And so okay. a lot of pets are diagnosed with elevated kidney values. And in conventional medicine, the first thing people are told, well, they have to be on a low protein diet and they can't feed raw because, and I've heard this numerous times because raw food is 100% protein. And it's not 100% protein. Uh, by the time right. you factor in the moisture, it's about 12 to 15% protein. It's, it's a, it's a meat-based diet. So it's 100% right. animal products, most products or mostly animal products, but it's not 100% right. protein. And the most important thing is it's a species appropriate protein. So if you're feeding a food like your average kidney prescription diet that's mm -hmm. grain based, mm -hmm. they, they'll give you a protein percentage, but you're feeding wheat and soy and these proteins that are completely inappropriate. And pets probably do do better if you feed less of those proteins because they're mm -hmm. so bad for a carnivore, but when you're feeding a species appropriate protein, they need that protein. They need that, those um, essential amino acids to mm -hmm. keep their kidneys healthy. And if you deprive them of that, you're actually gonna make the kidney disease worse. So you're saying that the amount of protein in, like even like on a bag of dog food, when you, you know, when you mathematically just, you know, put the actual protein ratios in there, it may show like a 25% protein inside a kibble diet, but that's not protein that's bioavailable. It's rendered, it's got all of these other, chemicals and all this other stuff in it. So even though like when you look at that based on the values, a kibble based diet might be higher in protein, but it's an undigestible protein. And so that basically runs rampant or causes chaos inside the kidney. Whereas a raw based diet might be actually a lower value of protein, but that protein is bioavailable for the actual pet. Did I understand that correctly? Right. Right. And the, and the, like the kibble diet will have, will be listed as a higher protein if you, because that's not a dry matter. If you add the moisture back in so that right. it was 70% moisture, it'll actually bring that uh, protein value down, but it is still an inappropriate diet or inappropriate protein source for a carnivore. And mm -hmm. if you look at your average bag of kibble, there's going to be a whole bunch of other ingredients and preservatives and additives and synthetic vitamins and minerals 
And the, the kidneys are right. a, one of the detoxifying organs. So anytime you're feeding a food or a supplement that's got that many ingredients, you are just making the kidneys work harder. Okay. When you feed a fresh um, raw food diet, that's whole food. So there's mm -hmm. no, no added supplements. You're going to have maybe six or eight ingredients that you can pronounce yeah. and you know what they are. You know what liver is, you know what bone right. is. You don't know what, if you can't pronounce something on your dog's um, uh, pet food or, or supplement right. uh, label, then don't feed it if you don't know what it is, because you're mm -hmm. just, you're, it, A, it probably isn't doing um, as much good. It's, it's on the label because they put it on the label. They can say, mm -hmm. oh, it meets AFCO's nutrient standards, which mm -hmm. we know are so uh, abysmal that, 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 that doesn't even really mean anything, but that right. makes the manufacturers feel better. Um, mm -hmm. But it's not, it's not doing anything to improve the health of your pet. So would this be like the equivalent of us eating like a McDonald's hamburger, even though it has protein in the middle, we think we're getting the protein that we need, but that hamburger is not, I mean, how much percentage of hamburgers really in a McDonald's hamburger? There's not that much, but it's also highly processed, you know, all that meat within there. And then we put buns on top of it that are full of carbohydrates, AKA sugar, and then we, you know, French fries on the other side. So when we eat that McDonald's based diet, that's why we get sick to some degrees that we're not just processing the protein from the hamburger. We're actually a, m making our kidneys work to actually process the French fries, the hamburger bun, the sugars from the ketchup, like everything else that's on top of that. So you're saying that on a kibble, let's flip it over to dog food. You're saying kibble, it may have protein, that little bit of hamburger that's in the middle, but it's everything that's on the outside of that is what is causing and wreaking havoc to our kidneys. Yeah, that's a, that's a great analogy. I'm gonna have to use that. Feeding kibble, it's like going and buying your pet a Happy Meal from McDonald's. And yes, that's but, about as healthy as it is <laughs> because, right. because the meat, I mean, I've heard this, like, you don't even know how much meat is actually in a McDonald's hamburger. Yeah. And then you add the bun and all the condiments and the French fries have mm -hmm. sugar on them from what I understand. And, yep. and so you have all, you have a little bit, maybe of real meat protein and then all this other garbage. Yeah. That's what kibble is. Yeah. And then essentially you're going to throw on rancid fat on top of that kibble based diet because any dog food that's left open for a week. So if I buy a 30 pound bag of dog food, my dog's not going to eat 30 pounds of dog food in a week. And so I leave it open or put it in a plastic container without a airtight seal on it. So now that fat that's on that actual kibble product is turning rancid. Right. Right. And so again, then, that's toxic to the kidneys. Right. So now I'm adding all this stuff and making the kidney works twice as hard. But if I feed a raw based diet, then the kidney is actually processing something that it can. It's designed to process through. It's not designed to process the heavy carbohydrates on one side, but really going through a raw based diet. Are you saying that a kibble based raw diet, or I'm sorry, a raw based diet actually allows that kidney to actually process more efficiently and also rest to some degree as well. Right, right, and stabilize. Um, you know, I have seen pets come in with, you know, slightly elevated kidney values and mm -hmm. I will always try to put them on a raw food diet. And another, mm -hmm. another important point to make is Laboratory normals are based on kibble fed dogs. So a lot of raw fed dogs will have slightly higher kidney values. And it's not that it's harming the kidneys in any way. They'll just run a little higher. The important thing to look for is that they stabilize. So that's what I look okay. for. Like I will, if I see a pet that has elevated kidney values, I will put them on a raw diet. Um, mm -hmm. And then we can always continue to monitor. You know, we always are looking at the lab values. I always want to make sure that we're we're on the right track and that we don't have to do other things to help support the kidneys. But but I will I will look for those values to stabilize and say, especially in older animals, you know, we might see those kidney values go up a little bit because their kidneys aren't functioning as well at 14 as they did when they were two. But as long as they're not spiking yeah. up really high in the pet 
is feeling okay. I mean, I always ask that question, how is the pet doing? Does it, you know, still want to go out for walks or does it still want to play yeah. or, you know, is it doing normal behaviors and feeling good? And I've, I've transitioned many pets with elevated kidney values onto a raw diet and they've done great. They've actually done better because it's like you said, they're actually getting appropriate nutrition. So we're feeding the kidneys, the nutrients that they need to function optimally. Plus they're getting the moisture content mm. I, feeding a, any pet. Well, you know, I don't ever recommend kibble, but especially with compromised kidney function and you're feeding them a dry food diet, especially in cats, because cats are not big water drinkers. Cats are really designed to get their moisture from their food. Right. And if you feed a cat a kibble diet, they're probably gonna be marginally dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think this is why a lot of cats end up with kidney disease, is they're marginally dehydrated most of their life if they're eating a kibble diet and eventually that damages the kidneys. So you yeah. have to feed you know, the diet with that 70% uh, moisture content in it to, in order to have healthy kidneys. Wow. So, I mean, really, when you're thinking about all that, and I like the point that you made about, yes, it may show a little bit of elevated kidney values within there, but you're looking for the stabilization of that actual value itself and have that being that new normal, even though it's running maybe a little bit higher, doesn't mean that it's bad. So what you're looking for on that is when you actually go assess those values, you're looking for spikes. You're looking for where they raise up or it actually continues to rise in there. So then you can say, okay, we might have something that really is indicative to something that is the kidney is damaged or the kidney is harmed in some way. But if it rises up and maintains and stays at that steady level, that means that the kidney is stabilized as well in mm -hmm. that. Right. And then of course I look at how the pet's doing, you know, and when a pet's in true kidney failure, I mean, mm -hmm. they're sick. They don't want to eat. They're okay. vomiting. A lot of times they have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. they, they just, they feel miserable. They usually get dehydrated because the kidneys can't concentrate the urine anymore. So I mm -hmm. have to look at the whole picture. And I yeah. think what happens sometimes in medicine is practitioners get hung up on these lab values, you know, and Conventional medicine likes to name things. So we, you know, um, have the elevated kidney values on lab work. And so we call it, you know, kidney disease. And then we stage it. Conventional medicine loves to do this too. They like to stage it. It's one, two, three, four based on the values. So then there's this really scary diagnosis. Oh, your pet has stage three kidney disease and it needs to be on this prescription diet. I, I really think we have to look at the whole picture. Cause those stages right. to me, the way I practice don't really mean anything to me because I'm looking at the pet. And if this pet has mm -hmm. elevated kidney values, but like I said before, it's happy. It's interacting with the family. It's, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to go for walks or if it's a kitty, it's wanting to play. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's otherwise acting normal. It's not that we ignore those elevated lab values but we don't slap this dismal mm -hmm. diagnosis on it and Prognosis and and you know worry the you know the pet parents that oh my gosh my pet is dying yeah. I mean I've seen pets live years with elevated uh, kidney levels and sometimes I add in additional support I have some Chinese herbal formulas and you know some other things that we can do to help support uh, support kidney function yeah. um, and and we do continue to monitor but I've seen pets live happy lives. Um, with slight elevations in the blood work. Because, you know, if you think about yeah. lab work, it, there's no absolutes. I mean, these are averages. These ranges, these normal, normal ranges are just averages from a database. Like what, you know, what are the most common values, you know, for your mm -hmm. average healthy pet? Well, these are, you know, a kibble fed pets. And, you know, there's, right. there's a lot of variables built into that. So mm -hmm. any given pet might, be just fine if the values are outside of that normal range. Um, yes. Not all, not all pets are going to fit into that mold. You know, it's like if I went to the doctor because I eat a very high fat diet myself. I eat a ketogenic type diet, and yeah. if I went into a conventional practitioner, they'd put me on statin drugs. I could guarantee it because my cholesterol is going to be out of the quote unquote normal range. But right. I know that it's fine because of 
the way that I eat, but that's not the accepted normal. And that's the same thing that happens in veterinary medicine is, you know, there's, there's these normals, but not all pets fit into the same mold. So we have to look at the, at the whole picture and how is the pet doing, um, in, in, in other ways. And I think a lot of times pets can live healthy lives for, for years with elevated uh, kidney values. Yep. And so now we have a pet parent. So I'm going to paint a scenario. So we have a pet parent that is actually going into the vet. Their vet tells them elevated kidney stage three puts, a, puts panic and puts that fear inside that pet parent's head. What questions can the pet parent ask their vet? in that moment in order to slow everything down to realize it's not something that's drastic in regards to having to take immediate but definitely needs attention right away what kind of questions can the pet parent ask to help educate themselves through this process and feel better about possibly going to a raw based diet i think i think i would ask um, well, how much normal kidney function does my pet still have? Because even though the values are elevated a little bit, they still, you know, people donate kidneys. So, okay, you take a person that donates a kidney, they just lost 50% of their kidney function and they yep. function perfectly fine, right? So if you think Correct. about that, we know that people who can lose a kidney and function just fine on 50%. Sure. So how much does a kidney function does a pet have to lose before we actually see clinical signs? And, you know, you may get, you know, you may get an, you may get an answer that, um, you know, it could even be like 70, maybe they've lost, you know, 70%, but they could still function. Mm-hmm. Okay. On that. Um, yep. And, and I think when it comes to diet, you know, I know the first thing that most conventional vets do is they put the pets on these prescription diets. And I would very specifically ask what is in that prescription diet that's good for the pet's kidneys and, and what makes it a prescription diet? Because the only thing that really makes prescription diets, prescription diets is the Mm -hmm. label and the cost there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in there that's prescription. It's such that's, such a marketing. It's a marketing scam. It really is. That it, it that's terrifying to me is that all of a sudden they put a label like prescription, whereas humans we think a prescription is something that is a prescription from your doctor that you can only get from your doctor, and allows you to you know this is medicine. So now they're putting this huge word prescription on top of a bag of dog food. And they, I think mentally I'm getting medicine for my dog. I am helping them out with the food, but I, you know, done some research on those labels. And sometimes the nutritional value within a bag of prescription dog food, I'll hold big quotes, prescription dog food is less than an actual off the shelf dog food. Right. And if you compare, if you actually read the ingredients, on one of those prescription diets and then go to the grocery store and read, uh, you know, just pull a bag off the shelf and read the ingredients. They're, they're really similar. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty scary. And it is all just about marketing. And I think very sadly, mm-hmm. because, you know, conventional veterinarians don't get a lot of training in nutrition. Well, hardly any right. training in nutrition. Uh, they don't even know. And so I think if you ask those questions, like, well, because it's the, one of the first things that happens is, oh, well, your pet, you know, has got stage three kidney disease, needs to be on this diet. I would ask them why, like, what's this mm. going to do for my pet's kidneys? And why is this better than right. the diet that the pet's on? And they'll say it's low protein. Um, but, you know, then look at the protein source, you know, it's going to be yeah. grain based or, you know, soy based or something like that. Yeah. And then I would ask, is that a appropriate, you know, protein source for a carnivore? And, you know, because just because the pet food company says that it is, doesn't, doesn't make it so. And I, and I've heard right. these spiels from these um, prescription diet, the reps that would come in from these companies and uh, they, they, you know, they'll tell you, oh yeah, corn is, you know, a, is a great protein source, perfectly appropriate for dogs and cats. And like well, that's what be. they were told to say. That's what they were told to say. They're mm-hmm. they're very they're very scripted 
they quit used to, they quit coming in to see me because <laughs> I'd ask questions that made them, you know, uh, uncomfortable and uh, well, they couldn't answer. I had asked questions right. beyond their script script. Um, it became a little bit of a game. You know, you talk to so many sales reps that if I could, yeah. you know, ask them questions that went beyond their, their sales scripts, it was mm -hmm. kind of, kind of fun for me. Yeah. I and like you know, to get them to you think. Know, you being the veterinarian that you are, you will take time with the reps where if you look at a, the, you know, the conventional veterinarian, they may not have time. I mean, they're running from patient to patient 15 minutes and they're filling up their day with patients all day long. And so when a rep comes in, they may have a hallway conversation or you have five minutes to tell me and it's quick, quick, quick. And then a quick decision gets made to put the, that prescription diet on the wall. And yes, I'll, I'll sell your prescription diet because at that point you're so busy that you haven't had a chance to research what's in that food or had a chance to ask those questions like you do in going into it. Even though you are extremely busy, you slow it down a little bit because you spend more time with the, your patients that I would imagine, and it's sounding like you spend more time with the reps that used to come to your clinic and talk to you about prescription dog food. And you're like, no, nah, that's not gonna happen unless it comes in a tube of raw meat. And so really on that kind of side is, you know, a lot of vets and I feel bad for them. They don't take, you know, they don't have the time to spend with their reps to really understand what's in that food and to really take that next step forward. So I think that puts that onus on us as pet parents. And it's not a big onus. This is our opportunity to ask questions, to do our research where our vet may not have time to actually do specific research on what's in that prescription diet. And really what kind of grain are they using? And is it bioavailable for my dog? And could that protein source be causing wreaking havoc on my pet's kidneys because they're actually processing something that their body is not made to process? May have a little bit too much sugar content or rancid fats, which is a toxin, which we talked about. Or it may just be have a grain or the multitude of other toxins they put into dog food. Now your dog's kidneys are processing that instead of processing the actual food source that it needs for living that healthy, thriving life that it should live. Right, right, exactly. And if, you know, as a pet parent, if you start asking these questions and like your vet can't answer them, or, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a veterinarian questioning the sales rep, they can't answer right. those questions then to me that's a big red flag because they should know what if it's a if it's a prescription diet the veterinarian is prescribing right. it they should know exactly what's in that diet what effect it's having um you know what why is it you know different from from other diets why is it better for the pet because they shouldn't be prescribing it if they don't if they don't know those answers, just like they should know what's on the package insert of any pharmaceutical or vaccination that they use and what are the potential mm -hmm. side effects. And, you know, pet parents are rarely talked to about those types of things. Um, yeah. Things are just, just prescribed. And I think veterinarians just buy into the propaganda of the mm -hmm. pet food companies. And like you said, it's, it's easy. The companies um, come in, they say, oh, you have a patient with kidney disease, feed them this food, or liver disease, feed them this food, and, and on and on, you know, down the list. But, you know, you, you have to, you have to wake up and you have to use your, use your brain and pet parents need to advocate for their pets and ask their vets these questions and just, you know, read the labels. Like I said, it's very simple to pick up a bag of food, go online, go on the website, and yeah. read the actual ingredients and ask yourself, does this sound like this would be healthy for a pet with, with kidney disease? Yeah. You know, I, I say definitely not. And there's actually, if you go to dogs naturally, if you just type in a Google search dogs naturally, you're gonna see dogs naturally magazine come up. That's the work Dana Scott is doing over there. She'll actually, um, she has a mathematical equation of how to actually see how much protein is in a bag of dog food and how many carbohydrates are in a bag of dog food is, you know, she's got her calculation measure out and it's not 
difficult. It's pretty easy to do. But while you're standing there, you can pull out your phone, type in some values and get down to really how much is in there. But really just pulling out the whole protein, pulling out all of this, we're not just talking about protein in dog food. We're actually talking about toxins in dog food as well. Because mm -hmm. as you said, the kidney is processing everything as it comes through. It's that, that filter that is filtering everything that your dog is eating. And if it's eating toxins or getting toxins from the environment or other sources around the home, yeah, that's another thing that the kidney has to process. So at some point, the kidney is going to get tired because it's working so much. I mean, if I'm making my heart race all the time, at some point, it's working a little bit too much. I'm talking about constant work with an elevated heart rate of over 120 beats a minute for an extended period of time. Let's say a year where my heart is beating. I'm going to go into the doctor and the doctor is like, yeah, we need to talk about slowing your heart down in case of heart failure. So throw it over into the kidney. If my kidney is working at 100% capacity for an extended period of time, it's a matter of time before the kidney is just not processing as effectively as it should. Right, right. You can't just overwork and over, I mean, there's just so much capacity, just like us. We have just so much capacity of what we can do in right. any given day. And our organs are the same way. And if they're continually overloaded, then yeah, they are gonna start to malfunction. And that could be part of the problem to be, to begin with. You know, I look at, you know, when I look at a pet's history, if they did come in with say elevated kidney values, well, what have they been eating? Have they been eating a diet with all these ingredients, potential toxins like glyphosate and other, yeah. other things that are, that are sprayed on these products that are in the food. Um, right. They've been eating those. Have they been over vaccinated? Have they had lots of medications? Um, yeah. so these kidneys have been worked and worked and worked and worked and yeah, sometimes we take them, a, a take a step back, get them on a, a more basic diet, mm -hmm. give the kidneys, like you said, give the kidneys a little break, let them rest and feed them appropriately. And a lot of times, um, though the values will, like I said, improve or in older pets, like, you know, our teenage, teenage pets, um, you know, we may not see the values come back down, but they can right. definitely stabilize and the pets can live really great quality of life. Yep. So really allowing now by feeding that raw based diet, you're going to allow that kidney to rest a little bit and really mm -hmm. start to reset itself. And so hopefully at th that point, then you'll start to see those levels, even though they might be a little elevated, start to stabilize. And so, but I love the other point that you had made is watch your pet. Are they still playing? Are they still having a good time? Are they still energetic and happy and being your goofy pet that you love so much? And in that, you know, at some point, kidney, as you said, kidney disease is, it's debilitating, is at some point you're going to notice if your dog is really seeing kidney issues and what you're doing is really not helping it's because you're going to see how they act every day and you're going to see their actual quality of life start to drop and so in there then you could take another action or go see dr judy and have other conversations about it but really getting back to a raw based diet is going to increase the amount of moisture inside their diet so they're going to be essentially having more moisture but then that protein that they're eating is actually bioavailable and stabilizing the kidney itself. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. That is awesome. So how can people get a hold of you, Dr. Judy? What's the best way? So my website is ahavet.com. That's mm -hmm. Animal Healing Arts is the name of my business. Our email is info at ahavet.com and our phone number is 720-515. 2421. And just a little plug, I'm actually doing a little webinar tonight with Dogs Naturally, you mentioned earlier. It's an awesome. ask, me, ask Me Anything. So I'm sure that information's on their website. It's also on my events page um, on my website, if anybody would like to tune in. So go to ahavet.com, sign up for her event tonight. Just go to the events tab at the top, take action on this right now. Like really just go in. And are you recording the event tonight, Dr. Judy? You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure if they are or not. So I'll, okay. I'll find out 
I'll find out during the event. So this, I mean, I'm not um, because I'm coming on as a guest for mm -hmm. um, Dogs Naturally. So I don't know whether yep. they record them and rebroadcast them. So I'll, yep. I'll find out. I'll, I'll find out tonight. So the reference I said, Dogs Naturally is going to have it. I'm sure it's going to be on their site. But make sure you sign up for this and attend because Dr. Judy, you're going to be able to ask Dr. Judy any question out there and really get yourself out there and really be able to maybe get some questions answered as well, where you've been curious about being a pet owner and how best can I help my pet or your pet has got an illness that kind of unexplained and you just want to get it, you know, want somebody as knowledgeable as Dr. Judy to help answer what you need for your pet. So ahavet.com, go click on the events tab and sign up for this event tonight. I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. I've heard Dr. Judy speak. And every time, not only does my brain get cooked to some degree, so I love doing this show. It's like, oh yeah, I got to try to keep up. But also Dr. Judy has a way of putting it in a way that is easily understandable. She's not going to speak a bunch of science and really go deep into the deep end where she's really going to put it into the context of something that you can take action on and help your pet thrive. And so this is something that I'm excited about and I highly recommend sign up for her event tonight or reach out to her if you have a specific question, just sign up for a quick consultation. So thank you, Dr. Judy, for being on the show. And as always, you can reach out to us at Parsley Pet, www.parsleypet.com, and take a look at the nutrition that you're feeding your dog. And our test, our nutritional blueprint, will let you know exactly what the levels are and the nutrient values inside your pet so that you can make adjustments so they can live this long, happy, healthy life that you want them to live. So thank you, Dr. Judy, for being on the show today. Thanks, Matt. Always happy to be here. This is awesome. So thank you guys. Enjoy the day. Have a fun at the event tonight with uh, Dr. Judy. And I hope you ask her some questions and try to stump her up, stump her a little bit. Hopefully I, I have the answers. I think that's impossible <laughs> to stump Dr. Judy because she has all the answers that you need. She's so smart in everything. Gosh, that's a lot to live up to. I know. <laughs> I know you can do it. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Enjoy your days.